what up though this your boy doc and before we jump into this video after this video make sure you check the description check out all my merch it's tons of new designs available and i upload different designs weekly peace Look at it, you feel me? Right. But it do deter it, and it is a handicap, and that's why I don't got a lot of rapper friends. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because the way people act, the way they come across, are just maybe not the... Uh keeping what they supposed to do type things, you know what I'm saying? Or just, yeah. just the whole energy it's is just, off? Yeah, it's just, it don't be authentic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't be authentic. And and I I don't like to guess. I like to know, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's right. like if you about to commit a crime with somebody and you don't know, you got to guess if he's going to keep it real. You got to guess if we get caught, he, he ain't going to tell. I don't want to guess. I want to know. And if I don't know, I ain't messing with it. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. Now, as far as the actual music that you have out right now, you know, I know you say you, you can get it basically, uh, it's flooded out there, you can get it anywhere. Like, what would you say is your favorite song off the last project that you put out? Last project I put out, which was that Devil's Rejects 3. Yeah. My favorite song on there, I got a couple of them, but... If I had to say, I would say uh, probably that higher plane, man. The higher with me, Justin, the hus on it. Yeah, because that's something I, you know, I didn't know. Not not speaking like right now, but just like as time progressed, you know, catching your music here and there, I'd be wondering like the songs, because some all the songs that I listen to, you can really hear your passion. And here, you know, sometimes the pain in it, but definitely the authenticity in the music. For the songs that you, when you really touch on, like, real situations that's going on with you, is it hard for you to put those songs out? Like, do you think, like, the other people, not not saying in a negative or illegal or anything type that way, but, like, if you touch on a real situation where maybe a family member passed or something like that, is it more therapeutic for you to put it in your raps and put it out to just try to get it off your chest? Or do you keep like a lot of that stuff in, you know, for your music? I think it's, I think it's both, but it is more therapeutic, man. And, and, and that's the way I like to express it because I really ain't gonna sit down and just unless you like my close homie. But I know it's it be so much that we be going through as life, man. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I get a message or somebody hit me and be like, bro, we played your music at my at my cousin's funeral. That's all he listened to, and this, that, and the other. Then I know I'm doing something right, and and it's real, and and that's why I like to come with that because it ain't no expiration date on the type of music that I make. You know what I'm saying? So you can hear a song, and you wouldn't know if I made this song today or ten years ago because I don't go through the trends and all that and what everybody else going through. So yeah, it's both to me, though. Yeah, and that's crazy that you say that because that was going to be. A question that I was going to ask you, have you ever felt, you know, the need to try to not not be of the trend, but like test out the trend of, you know, how with the you got rappers will like do the same cadence or the same type of 808 type beats to try to hit the radio and all that stuff. Have you ever like, man, let me try that out to see or you, you, you know, fine with like how you push it out to stay authentic and original to yourself? Only way I would try it out is if I'm doing a feature for somebody and that and that's what they want. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, I'm picking the beats that I think is dope that I would want to hear or the niggas that I think would want to hear, and that's what I'm going with. You know, because it's easy to do the music that's being done. You know, by me, I ain't gonna say it's easy for everybody, but we can do that music any day and do that. But no, nah, we are gonna keep it to this real shit, man, and. and and keep pushing this line, man, because it's longevity in it. Just like, you know, somebody like 40 or yeah, you know, you got a 20, 30 year career out of that. And then I see the people that do the fast stuff or the trendy stuff 
and they might have a two or three year career, then you won't never see them again. So I'm going with longevity and history over trendy. Right, right, yeah. Now, what what was the thought process behind, or or like, like what was the thought process behind like the title or the name of Devil's Rejects? Like, what does that mean, or what does that stand for? So me and Jack, we 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 working on the first album and shit. And I'm like, bro, what we gonna call this shit? And he was like, bro, we gotta think of the sickest shit ever. So we sitting around and we throwing names back and forth. But then he just look up, he take off his glasses and he look and he's just like, nigga, we the devil's rejects. I was like, that's it, bro. That's it. Period. You feel me? Yeah. So Jack made that shit up. Mm. So, but like, did y'all discuss like? So what what does that mean to you? To me, it means, you know what I'm saying, that we, we on a higher plane and, and the shit, even if we do bad shit, we got good intentions. So the devil going to reject us, you know what I'm saying? He ain't even going to accept us, you know what I'm saying? Because our our heart is and, 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 and the intentions we got it behind everything we doing is so true and solid that, you feel me? That that's how I look at it. You. Yeah. Now, um, as far as like your social media and everything, you know, everything is all Ampuccino, official Ampuccino, or just Ampuccino. Yeah, Ampuccino, and that's the dope thing about my name because you, you know I got the only name like that, so you could just pull it up and everything gonna pull up. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to do no deep dive or nothing. Everything is Ampuccino or Ampuccino One. So yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Now, how how did you even come up with with that name? Was that like a name given to you, or you had to sit back and you know come up with a rap name, or was that your official your official first rap name? I made it up because uh, like Al Pacino, but and my name Amp, and uh, but my nigga Chino Nino had just came out, and I was like, damn, I got to think of something that's you know what I'm saying that's coincide with his shit. So Al Al Pacino and Pacino, that's it right there. Mm, yeah yeah so i always kind of i peeped the similarities but i didn't think you know myself like that's where where it really came from you know what i mean yeah yeah you know so you know i don't want to i always try to get you know paint a picture of a person's environment and stuff like that and you was talking about like the hardships and you know the street type of life and everything there like as far as growing up in in, in akron is it would you say the streets is the only, is it just like lack of resources? How is it like there for like if an outer towner came there and was like, man, I want to move to this. Is it an area, a tourist area or a place where like, no, nah, you better move on the outskirts. Is it resources for like the youngins and stuff to try to go get jobs and do it the right way? Or is it kind of set up where it's almost like a trap? Yeah, it's definitely like a trap because back in the day, it used to be set up like that where we had all the companies. We had Goodyear, Chrysler, had a lot of companies because my dad told me one day, right before he passed, we was talking. He was like, man, I feel sorry for the youth right now. I said, why? He said, when I was going to school, you could drop out of high school, nigga, be 18 and go get a job at Goodyear and make $25 an hour. And that was back in the 70s and 80s. So I'm like, yeah, so all the companies done left and all that. But if you got money and you on the outskirts, Akron a good place to raise your kids at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you in the ghetto, nah, it's it's a cesspool. You're going to have to get active. Mm. Mm. Now, now, when you say cesspool, like say, for instance, you know, if you was talking to um, a young dude coming up, you know, maybe 13, 14 years old, and he in that type of environment growing up and he maybe don't have no guidance, no OGs and stuff like that. You know, like what would be some game that you would give to someone of that age of how to maneuver and survive through that type of setting? The whole thing is uh, when you come to the youth right now, you got to have an alternative because if you're just talking and after the talk, they got to go back home and ain't no food in the house and the lights about to get cut off tomorrow. All that, all that talking you did gonna go out the window. Yeah. But when you go to the youth, you are gonna have to be able to point them in the right direction, have another alternative for them. You got to because right now talking is dead. You know what I'm saying? Like if 
if you can't bring an alternative to the table, all that talk will go right out the window when they go back home and can't make a, a, a turkey sandwich. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, because that's, you know, that's, that's like a big discussion and a lot of people that possibly, like, view the platform – you know, it's, I don't pick every topic. You know, I touch on certain things to try to put, like, the medicine and the candy tour stuff, you know, and so it's, like, kind of important for someone that I know that got wisdom and information, you know, to try to... Because I don't understand, like... I understand, Now, I understand what you're saying and, and agree with what you're saying, like, how... Why would you take some information from an individual if they can't, like, actually put you in position to do it? They'll just figure it out. Like, when you was around that age, did you have, like, OGs, or did you have to figure it out yourself? We had to figure it out ourselves, because the OGs was giving us facts, and, and we was buying dope from our OGs. Like, they weren't even doing the shit that the OGs in the Bay was doing. Like, at least the OGs in the Bay was putting money behind niggas and putting niggas out. Our OGs weren't doing that. Our OGs would watch a 15-year-old get 20, 30 bands, and then try to gamble with him to take it from him so he could front him something. You feel me? Yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 yeah that's how it was, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's the same, ain't it? Can you imagine trying to take 20 bands from a 15 year old oh, and probably with some fake dice? Some, you know what I'm saying? Because them niggas was on that shit, bro. Trying to rape the youth to try to come up off of, trying to basically take. Take advantage of them being young and being naive to the game, trying to come up on them instead of putting, yeah, right. Yeah. Instead yeah. of instead of instead of taking the niggas money and then showing, look, bro, this how I took your money. Here go your money back, nigga. Don't do that. This, you feel me? It's real out here. You feel me? Yeah. That's how that lesson was supposed to be taught. Have you seen like over the years have that cycle just? like kept repeating or do you think it's like getting better where like this generation is coming up is peeping what's toxic and what's what's real nah in my hood this generation right now is on drugs and they're getting a lot of money and they don't give a fuck about nothing and any disrespect or anything niggas is knocking shit down and that's how it's rocking right now period yeah where you know did the transition and not in your particular music and i and I, I tell everybody that's listening to this if you haven't checked out his music to definitely go check out his music i'm gonna leave some links in the description and comment section to some of his albums and mixtapes you know where where do you think like the transition happened at or what caused where at one point in time in the rap game you quote unquote glorified the hustler but now it's like kind of glorifying the dope thing. Like, where do you think that came from? It came from it came from the music, and when 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 the rappers start saying it was cool to you know pop pills or it was cool to do this and it was cool to do that, that made the people that didn't do it want to do it because they they favorite rapper doing it, and that made the people that was doing it come out the closet and say, shit, it's cool now, shit, we can get high and all this shit. So, it definitely came from the music. Yeah, and and I don't get it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I, you know, they, they, you know, a lot of people make the argument, oh, one is not better than the other, but I'm like, you know, at least one, and it always would be a rebuttal, like, okay, you get money to take care of your family and loved ones, and then people will say, oh, are you taking from the opposite, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, you know, you don't want to preach to individuals to destroy their body, you know what I'm saying, and destroy themselves and their community because they may have kids and they prefer to put their money towards that than feeding their own kids. And I just don't understand, like, because at one point in time, it seemed like hip-hop used to be the vehicle or the voice for the inner city. Now it seems as if hip-hop on a larger scale is more the voice for, like, middle America. You know what I'm saying? Like, the problems that maybe the suburbs or other individuals are going through and not so much of the inner city where hip hop was built at, you know, would, would you agree with that? Or you think it's kind of different? Yeah, like that's it? real thought. Not that you said it like that. Cause I never sat down and looked at, yeah, that's real. I think that's real too, because you got a lot of rappers out here that's trying to push that depression line and, 
you know, because in the inner, we didn't have time to be depressed. We we had to get up and go get it. So we, you know, they pushing out. Yeah, you're right. Suburbs right now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent with that, bro. Now, when you, when you said you know we we didn't have time to be depressed, can can you like further explain what you was about to say right there? Because you know, right now in the music, everybody talk about. Uh, how sad they is and this, that, and the other. And, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, you couldn't sit around and tell nobody that because you had to get up and put yourself in a better position so you wouldn't be sad. You feel me? Yeah. So we ain't had time to sit around and be depressed and looking at each other and right no, it's time to go get it, man, so we can, you know, we can change this, this, this trajectory that we about to, that we see ourselves going to, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And do at any point in time, and it's not, and I, and, and for people that's listening to this, he, I don't feel like he's saying at all, like, you know, speaking on being depressed, you know what I mean? Like in a bad, a bad way or nothing like that. Cause I'm pretty sure like when people going through stuff in their real life or in the streets and stuff like that, like you said, you, you had went through your dark phase you know, when you went through that dark phase, like what helped you come out of that dark phase? Because you said you had stopped making music for like a year and a half. Yeah, uh, just knowing I had to leave. And yeah, like like you said, though, I, yeah, I ain't speaking uh, ill of people that got problems or depressed. You know what I'm saying? I was just uh, speaking on, and I'm talking about depressed far because, you know, most people in the hood depressed because they ain't got no bread. And that's the, that's the, really the line I was coming at. But uh, like you said, the music, man, I had to go back and, and, and listen to the music and understand that I couldn't just, you know what I'm saying, stop. And it didn't seem like I stopped because I already had so much material recorded that I was still putting albums out. So that was the good thing about it. But what got me back into it, man, was just listening to music and just, and just knowing that okay, we got to keep this, we got to keep this movement rocking because if we, if I don't, who who going to do it? You know what I'm saying? Even though it's other people that can do it, but I'm still looking at myself like, if I don't do it, who going to do it? Right, right. W- would you ever fall back in the position of just being like a CEO over your own label and, and just put it, push out some artists or you feel like, you know, you know, the the story that you got to tell you you still gonna push that? No, uh, I'm definitely uh uh gonna push the line with other artists because you know I, I'm really in it for the youth and I I want the youth to be the forefront of it anyway. Even though my my label, the youth is about to be the forefront of my label. So I'm ready. I'm damn sure gonna be kicking my feet up in a minute. I'm always gonna make music, but yeah, I'm gonna take a back seat and give it to the youth, man, because I like how they have a fun and. And, and, and it's dope. So hell yeah, I'm about to give it to him. Yeah, yeah. And you know, before we before we wrap it up, is there um, any artists that you haven't worked with that you would want to work with? Uh, yeah, hell yeah. Starface, mm. Nas, Cool G. Uh. And let me see, five the youth, uh, that boy J.I.D. Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of dope people, man. Hell yeah, man. I like to trade ideas with all dope people, man. So yeah, it is. If I was to think about it, it'd be way more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and you know, would, would it be any last words or anything that you want to tell the fans or supporters or listeners before we get up out of here, like yo? you know, social media, the, the outlets that you want to send them to, project names and everything like that? Uh, yeah, just uh, look up Al Pacino on all social networks, bro, and uh, go cop that new Devil's Rejects 3, R.I.P. to Jack, man, and uh, let's just have a good year this year, man, and everybody get to this paper, man, because you see what they just did to 6 9 So people got to take account that this internet and the social media could be a double edged sword and to be careful on it and quit putting all your business on it 
and quit trying to beef over this internet. I know it's a new thing. I know people like to have fun and clown and roast, but it's also serious and it ain't to be taken lightly and your whole life to change behind it. So we need to smarten up. Uh, all the older nags need to get the young nags and really put it in them, put it behind them and give them the game. And let's stay off this internet, man. Word, word, for sure. With the, with the negative shit and get on there <laughs> with the positive shit, man, and push a line and push your merchandise and push all that, man. Yeah. So, hell yeah.